So, once a time it's... <laughs> once, once a time. Once a time it's begin. What the hell is this? Happy Monday morning to you. Chris Courtney here, New Pragmatic. It is time for the feedback loop uh, where I um, I take your requests. I don't take really take your requests. I take your questions. And uh, we answer them in um, as efficient a manner as possible while also going the long way around probably everything. Um, got some stuff here this morning from Rebecca. Um, kind of a slow weekend. It's Mother's Day weekend. So um, happy Mother's Day to all of the moms. Um, literally half of the new pragmatic um, uh, cohort um, is uh, would fall into the category of mom. So I'm super happy to have all of you ladies along. Um, I sometimes get to um, I sometimes get a chance to see your your cute little ones sneak into the camera, which is always fun. Uh, Lisa's little guy paid us a visit last week. He's super fun. Um, on this side, um, we had uh, we celebrated Mother's Day on this side of the side of the, of the um, of the screen, and um, the little one helped. Uh, the little one, which is twelve, which means she's almost as tall as I am. Um, she was uh, super cool. Made her mom a card, and we um, we uh, made a cake, and you know did all the things that you do because you're scared to go get flowers because they might have been touched by the wrong person, and you get the virus. So um, so yeah, it's it's weird, you know. Um, it, it, even the consideration of do we go buy flowers? I don't know. I think I'm gonna plant some flowers next week. And when I do that, maybe I can just go clip a few flowers <laughs> for special occasions. Um, also, we did uh, we did quite a bit of uh, writing this week. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so we can uh, so I can show you a little bit of what I'm talking about. So Fresh Market is has been moved from UX. It used to be housed. It was it was the primary exercise that you walked through to go through UX. Um, and I've shifted in. A bunch of new curriculum there, uh, new exercises. So now, um, if you if I walk you through, you know, one you can see like this is all still, and you can see I get to the end here and I haven't written out labels for these, but um, this is the 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 f full project. All the all the, the um, exercises that are going to be in here are in here, but when you get in here and take a look at it from a spreadsheet standpoint. You know, I'm adding some videos in, in as well, but you get an idea of how complete things are. There's there's little holes here and there. Most of the exercises are complete, so um, you get an idea of, of of how things are going here. A lot of lot of work this weekend on this particular project. Um, but we're gonna come over to Rebecca because Rebecca had some specific questions. Um, she's moving into code. And she said, uh, it says here, uh, has some issues with the hero image. Uh, and she, okay, so she reused the same hero formula she had for care, care point, but cell wise image is too far to the right and not big enough. Having trouble figuring out how to add a class just to make the cell wise P intro text white. Okay, fair enough. Um, as far as the image goes, um, I'm gonna have to take a look and see how big it is. Um, you know, if it's if it's a different size, it's gonna be it's gonna be hard to kind of um, just plop that in without writing some um, some custom code, especially when you're dealing with the image. The image si the image needs to be basically the same size as whatever the last image was. Otherwise, you're gonna get a different output. It's it's kind of like um, baking a cake but uh, instead of following the instructions on the box you decided to change the ingredients and you get a slightly different cake um, yes it's the same box cake all right same same basic thing but the stuff you put into it was different it'd be, it'd, it's kind of like if you put a lot of extra text into this so you get a much different design so um so, so we're gonna have to take a look at that also i know that you sent over you had another question that came over from feedback loop and it said you were 
need some help with the rotating animation mess message animation in the hero section for cell wise you try to prototype it so you can record it on loom but clearly you don't know how to know how to animate it correctly so i want to take a look at that too um and i've got that up here so let's let's actually start here um okay so so you've got 5G deployment app co-creation. Um, all right. So it appears that this that this hero unit. I'm trying to see how it's constructed. So this is the hero unit. All right. If this is constructed the way that I would like to construct it. Um, Okay, you've done this, and it says on click. I wouldn't go on click. I would go, I would just do while hovering, navigate to, a smart animate, um, and essentially this dot should move, and then your message should switch. Um, Trying to see how. Okay, it doesn't look like there's any any of these connected aside from this first one. I just want to move this over. Um. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. Th well, I mean, I guess you could. I, I, I guess you could, but I would. I would still keep it right here in that area and I'm not clicking per se, I'm just hovering. Um, and this would be smart animate as well. Um, all right, let's just, let's just give this one a, a run because instead of clicking, you want that to just kind of happen automatically if you're hovering over the hero section. So, happening a little fast but you it's definitely moving so we've got that part right let's come back over to the animation and let's 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 like try to I don't know make this a little smoother um, you know if you said 1200 it gives it a little more time So, do we do it here as well? Um, I don't like the immediate jump. It's like it, it jumps too fast. Let's take the let's take the second one off. I just want to see how far we can go with this. So now we're just linking these two. There's 1,200, and you're going from homepage six to homepage seven while hovering. Um, and I'll also um, let's mouse up, mouse down. I could also try keypad and I could just say, I want to do the like arrow. So like when I arrow go over and I'm just going to try to make this to where I can control these via the arrow. That way while you're recording, you can just kind of click through. So keypad, arrow, uh, yeah, okay. Let's see how this works. So now it's not hovering. And 
that does that, which is not ideal. The problem is you don't get that, you don't get that ping back. Un, you know, the question I have is I'm guessing that your animation must, must go back and it, it, it must go across in, in a, you know, like a flow here. So if I drag these further down, what we should, uh, Sorry, I just need a little space to see what, what's going on. Nope. Yep. Okay, so here on keypad, that way. Nope. Navigate to smart animate. Same thing here. Keypad. To oops, there we go. So let's see if it's doing the thing we want it to do. Yeah, I think I think what I would do here, and again, some of this is. You know, it's wireframe animation, which is a, it's almost like a, a thing that does, it's almost, it's, it sounds weird that, why, yeah, ha, let me check out your wireframe animations. What? But, I, I like the fact that it's, like, you can kind of sit there and explain, yeah, we wanted to kind of get a, get an idea of a gist for how it was being animated, um, which is what you were essentially doing, you just kind of had to show them the parts, um, but if we do this and then we have the last one loop back around. So now we've got this, we can go, oh, well this is keypad. Yeah. And then it's navigate to, um, I'm now not zoomed in enough to see what's there. Okay, homepage 11. Homepage 11. And it's keypad, come on, keypad, that way. Got it, and then you get over to homepage 11, and this is keypad over, navigate homepage, yep. Same thing here, keypad over, yep. And then here it's going back, so same thing, over, it's just looping. And now when we go in, yeah, it goes back to the beginning. That goes over here, over there, back, back. You can't. Um, one thing I don't necessarily like is I don't like the way this is easing. Easing is the is the animation, so it's got like an ease out. If you just sit in linear, it should like maintain. It it should be like consistent, not a. It shouldn't like speed up and slow down. Um which I think would be more appropriate for an animation. This particular type of animation, uh, most of the time I would love an ease in, ease out sort of thing. Um, it's like a slight breaking, but let's, let's try to take a look at it now. Some of this has, has to do specifically with where, um, with how, you know, some of it is how, how long, um, you know, in many ways I could, I, I want to kind of simplify this a bit and, you know, instead of, part of me is like, okay, well this should just be over here, full stop. And this should be
over here, full stop. And this this one should be. And keep in mind, you know, you're you're just you're just giving people an idea. Oops, sorry. I'm still in prototype mode, and that's the problem. You're just giving people an idea of what the animation was like. It doesn't matter if, if it, like, okay, so now, instead of having to stop at that box, we're just gonna go straight back and forth, all right? So let's refresh this. Oh, that's weird. How, how in the hell did I break it? Um, somehow I broke it. Um, let's not do that. I don't understand. Oh. Now I, now I get it. Okay, let's undo that. I didn't like the fact that I deleted one of them. doesn't work with this right arrow movement thing but that gets your that gets your animation happening um, I do think that there's there's a fair amount that you should look at you know like for instance this um, it's 5g deployment does it have to be does it have to be gray back there could it be white and that would that would read easier um, and this again, I, we're trying to we're trying to get this to the point where people recognize what you're doing. So if I put it over there, save it. very weird I'm not there's something there's something off about the way your let's just undo that a lot of this with smart animate comes down to exactly how these things are constructed so without getting too deep into reconstruction you know the the using of the arrow allows us to move that little pinball uh, back and forth, kind of like a game of Pong. Um, and yeah, so that's that. Let's see. Um, the John Balboa checking in this morning. Good to see you, buddy. Um, okay, so this a little. Okay, so this is a group. Yep. Okay, rectangles there. Ellipse. I can't, frankly, see why the name is the same. We haven't ungrouped it or anything. It should like this you know if I, if I started it over here that shouldn't break anything like it's still the same thing yeah it gets mad and then only wants to recontinue from really bizarre Yeah, I don't want you to have to like recreate the thing, but something, something breaks with this one when you move that dot. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll go back and put it right back where it was, but you can see in other areas where it d doesn't get fussy at all, but there's something, there's something fussy about 
you know, it, it moves and then it moves some more. But I'm, I, I want it to, I want it to just go all the way across and back. And I feel like I'm gonna have to, I feel like because of what I'm seeing, I'm gonna have to basically rebuild it um, just to get it to do that, which isn't a huge deal. I mean, it's just like, okay, delete that one away, put a new one in. But um, that, that's what I would do here. So that, you know, as you're, yeah, yeah, you can do this, but it's like click, click, click. Click. It's a, it's got it's got one too many it's got one too many stops in it. It's, it should be one two one two instead of one two three four like one two one two. Um, there's there's only two towers. So anyway, that I would I would look into that. Um, but but now we've your animation. It's the auto animate, but it's 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 how you trigger it that really matters. Uh, let's take a look at the comment. Uh, oh, that was like two months ago. We're gonna check that out. Okay, let's close that one. Uh, yeah, we'll come back to that. That's part of a video I'm making this morning. Uh, yeah, Johnny uh, or John Belboda checking in. Um, yeah, people get sick, and it's a uh, it's a crazy time when people get sick because immediately, uh, John's checking. Uh, you know, he had a project he was working on, and a client got ill. Uh, moment, that, the moment somebody gets sick these days, is like, is it is it what I think it is? And um, and yeah, I mean, it it it's kind of strange because it's like the opportunity to work is there, but then. You know, there's the very real side of these things, which is people get sick, and um, that's where it, that's where it becomes much different. Like the way you look at it, like, oh wow, holy crap, um, people get sick from this thing. It's not just it's not just like you can't work. It's like you might not you might not live. So so cons you know, like your whole mental frame of reference changes the moment that um you, you even it doesn't even have to be it doesn't even have to be covid but when you are talking to somebody and you hear that they've been sick like your mental reference immediately now jumps to is is their life in danger that is such a weird place to be in and that's that's where we're all living right now it's very strange and, and think think about it you know uh if your kid got sick would that be the is it covid do they have the COVID? That's the first place my head would go to. Um, so, so yeah. But anyway, Bob John was uh, was collaborating and just beginning to talk to somebody about a project, and somebody on that project got got ill, and then like everything kind of froze for a little bit. And there you are. You know, these things occur. So wise. Let's jump in. Uh, yeah, right. Re reusing the hero. Let's go ahead and take a look. Um, also, I just want to check my channel and make sure that things are still up and running. Do do do. Yeah, we're still we're still live. Thank you, one viewer. <laughs> one active viewer. That changes. I, I see the numbers. People check in through the day. It's fine. Um, all right. So we've got things up and running here. One thing, Rebecca, that I want to emphasize is right. You, you've got Cellwise kind of living on its own. We want this to be inside a case study. Um, I'm just going to bump it into here. Uh, yeah, I want to move it into case study. And the reason I'm moving it into case study is because if we don't fix the images now, we'll have to fix all of them later. Uh, so we might as well just fix that now. Um, so, you know, I will, I will get this up and running. And if there is any brokenness to this, I will take a look at it. But, you know, it's going to work the same way as Silicandy. Images, whatever. So here's Cellwise, and you've already got it. So it should be fine. But if it's not, we'll fix it. Um, let's go live with this. All right. So here we are. And... Your hover is working fine, a little rainbowy. 
Um, the so the first thing is like this. Uh, it's a, by the way, it's very pretty purple. Like I like the purple. Um, but the first thing we want to do is we want to look at this um, background here um, and kind of figure out. Okay, we've got P class intro and P class intro. If we if we look at this and think about okay, well, how is this constructed? So you have, it's called Cell Hero. I'm not sure why, why if you need Care Hero at all. Um, so I'm gonna delete that away just for a second just to see if that gets us, yeah, apparently you, you do need Care Hero. All right, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> that did something very bizarre. Um, but I see Care Hero and I could say Care Hero, um, dot intro or I could say care hero P um, I'm not really sure yeah okay so that color is applied to intro so it's probably gonna be yeah you got care hero intro okay that's the setting the width so cell hero intro I should be able to grab that color and make it white which is fine um, let's see here it's fine. Intro. Okay. Um. Hmm. Okay. Care hero intro. Intro. Cell hero intro. You've got it right there. I think I'm just gonna say um, uh, color FFF, and there it is. So you, you know, we're not creating a new class; we're just putting it on this. This is uh, you're doing it this way because you've already got a class. It's called Intro. You've put a bunch of styles on it. In this particular instance, you need care. You need the intro that's part of care. The care hero. Um, to actually, you don't need care hero, you need sell hero. Okay. Um, because care hero, yeah, we don't want that on. Sorry. That's only working because you have care hero still in play there. I'm not entirely sure if you need care hero here. Um, but it's still there. What I want to do is I want to remove Care Hero and just see what's going on. Yeah, it's some, there's something in the background of Care Hero. Um, let's look at Care Hero and see what's happening. So it's the background size, I bet. That's That's really interesting that it would, it would change like that. There's got to be something else with Care Hero in play. Um, yeah, it's right here. So if we just said dot cell hero, that should, yeah, that cleans it up. So now we've given cell hero, we've connected it here. Again, this is the cascading. So Octa, Care, Cell, they're all using this as the basis, but then you're overriding that. You overwrote the background image for Care Hero here. Now you're overriding the background image for cell wise here. We can get rid of that. We can get rid of this bit of code there because you don't need that color. Um, what you do need, if I go into cell wise, is I need to take care hero off because we've solved for that. And now this has got the white, but it's also somewhat lighter because we got rid of the care hero. Um, you were talking about the, the placement and some of this, if we go back into your styles, um, it's just, you know, do you change this to like 90? on the on the cell hero 
Obviously not. That's way too big. Um, but if you can go 60, you know, that's a little better. Um, sorry. The, um, just kind of looking at it here on the edge. If we go to work, and here's care point. So, it's kind of starting at the same left edge. Um, you know, Okta, the beauty of Okta was that it just went all the way to the edge. Just off the edge, you could do whatever with it. There, there really was no, no, no fail, no way to fail there. But here, um, you, you've got to have like a really background position on it. And this is where we're going to go back. And you can kind of see what background position does for you. Um, yeah, if we say, oh, sorry. If we say it's going to be 50, 25 pixels, it's going to be pretty close to the, oops, sorry. So 25 pixels is much closer to the right. Bottom, uh, if we say 100 pixels it moves it up significantly uh, the, the real trick though here is responsiveness uh, when we inspect element you kind of see it holds that same basic barrier um, but as you come down obviously you get into some real issues with this uh, responsively because it, it runs into you it runs into this left side of the hero unit pretty quickly and I, you know, there's a few different ways you could you could really design this. One would be like a two-column design, where you had you know I have a left column, and then I have a right column, and I set these up to work off of one another, um, rather than rather than trying to manage this as a background image. Um, and, and I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about just in, let's just take it over here in a Figma. Um, and it, yeah, we'll just use this constraints example. So if we were to draw a frame and, okay, so the frame is X big, kind of rough, you know, I'm kind of roughing this out, but here's your cell wise intro, okay? And your cell wise intro also has this image over to the over to the right, all right? The the idea is that these two, right now the, pr the problem is this is in the background instead of being over the top. And gotta change it. So, so because this is in the background, when this shape changes size, um, it just immediately encroaches on the content to the left. If these were in columns side by side, you know, this wouldn't be nearly as big of a thing because, when I, you know, if I if I were to group these things together, once I group them together, one's not going to encroach in the other. Now they will squish and squeeze and do all sorts of other weird things, but they you don't you don't ever end up with this situation where, you know, I've got to worry about the image going behind because they're built off of one another and, and you don't see this with your other case studies like if we go to if we go to Miro for instance or I'm not sorry not Miro if we go to Okta so let's look at Okta for a second so here's Okta same case study right well you know it takes a while for, because this is going all the way to the edge it takes a while for this to become an issue and you've written media queries to, you know, throw that into the background and, and do what you need it to do. Um, where, where this, like CarePoint, CarePoint has a similar problem. Um, you know, you, you have this point where it comes down and you have to be very careful with your media query you have to say, okay, I'm going to snap it off, and then I'll move it to the top. You've written media queries to take care of that. You're going to need to do basically the same thing with uh, 
with um, cell wise. Sorry, case. Got to do the, basically the same thing here, where you're going to have to write some media queries and determine where that breaks, or you put it into two columns because this doesn't have to be a background image. Just to, it doesn't. I mean, the way the way that it's setting up right now, this is like literally one column, and then this is two column. But you know, part of the beauty of the way you have it is all of them are the same but you're having to write little specific background image hacks for each one because you're getting all these different types of background images. I think um, Cellwise and CarePoint are uniquely different than um, Okta and Silicandy. So that you could have two hero styles here and be just fine. Um, oh, Chelsea's checking in. Chelsea, good to see you. Um... No, it's not too late. Not too late at all. I like I like just taking a look at these things right now. Um, but uh, before I before I lose my train of thought here, Rebecca, I'm gonna push this up. Um, yeah, we changed the cellwise C, but we also changed the CSS, so that should be showing up as well. Um, oh, it's there. Okay, good. My light is really bright today over here to my right, and it's kind of kind of uh, keeping me from seeing everything. Get add, uh, check the status again. Okay, so it's all there. And again, the big thing is I moved cellwise into the case study so that future linkages of things won't break on you. Um, so uh, yeah, get commit updates from uh, feedback loop get put charging master there it goes all right so Rebecca you're up to speed I will check in with you uh, we will meet here in a couple hours actually because I know you got your you, get, you have your session coming up um, let's spin out of this for a second and go look at um, not that, not that. Where's Discord at? Where did my Discord go? There it is. Uh, feedback loop. Um, design system thinking exercise. Yes, this is me, Google. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. So, um, this project is centered around the cashless convenience store. And um, the interesting thing about the cashless convenience store is that, one, this was not a made up, <laughs> first of all, most of I, I have a very hard time um, coming up with hypothetical situations. Um, everything that I have, everything I, if you see it in, if you see it in the program, it is inspired by or directly ripped from the headlines, sort of a uh, sort of thing. Um, the cashless convenience store uh, that was open. This was in San Francisco. And it was, this was a couple of years back. But it, it, they had a very specific problem. But uh, rather than focusing on just that one problem, there, there were, there's a litany of problems with a cashless store. Um, and on one hand, as a privileged member of society who has been able to remote work and uh, live in a decent part of town and I've got a computer and all, I've got a lot of the I got a lot of the, the things that are really necessary to take advantage of said cash store but I want us to pump the brakes on whether the cashless store works for us and I want us to look at 
who doesn't the cashless store work for? Okay. Part of our, you know, I, I, I read this, I read about this over the weekend. Um, somebody was, we were talking about, man, it wasn't we, I say we, but as a community, the discussion was, was about things that never come up in a, things that are crucial to our job, but they never come up in a job interview. And somebody talked about accessibility. And this really chapped my head a little bit because accessibility, accessibility and the lack of accessibility will get you sued. Okay. I understand accessibility is not a very sexy topic. Um, but if you aren't taking care, if you, if you're, if you're, desi if you're designing for a subset of society and not for society you're leaving yourself open you're leaving yourself open and exposed you need to think about I think if you design for the fringes you innovate okay if you think about okay what's the what's the what's the edge case here because that's where the edge the, the innovations on those edge cases just designing for like the 80%, there's no innovation there. That's been figured out. That's been figured out. Like, how do we how do we get this to more people? So in the systems exercise, we're we're studying the idea of this cashless store and looking for where the holes could be. All right. And let's see let's see if you find the obvious hole and and some people discover other holes that frankly I hadn't considered. So um, the systems, there's the app system. Are there bugs in the software? Slow da loading, downloading. Does the customer need a certain phone update for the app to work? So it's not just the app that you've created, but it's the app, it's like iOS or Android that the app sets on. The grocery list system, is the customer shopping around mindlessly or do they have a plan? Does the application have a section for customers? to pre-mark their items before arriving at the store. Okay, so there's like a, a subset. Internet, is it public Wi-Fi that's easy for uh, customers to connect to or do they need a password? What happens if the Wi-Fi is down? Is the cell phone coverage good for all carriers in this building? Ding, ding, ding. That was the problem with the store. This store was in a noted black hole for cell coverage in downtown San Francisco. It was an Amazon, it was one of the first Amazon Go stores. They put it in this place that was notorious. Everybody knew that worked around that. Yeah, you go to that corner and there's just no coverage. You can't, like everybody's calls drop, everything. And of course that's where Amazon put a Go store. And then suddenly like you're trying to use Amazon's app in this, and this is, this is, I, 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 I say this for, for you because this is not a mistake that some newbie startup made. This was Amazon, one of the world's largest, most profitable companies, ran into this, ran put headlong into the teeth of this problem that everybody in that neighborhood knew. It's as if nobody had surveyed the Wi Fi cover or the uh, cell, cellular coverage for that space. So, yes, they did install Wi-Fi. Question is, how do you inform somebody that they need to join the Amazon Wi-Fi to, to, to utilize and to use this service? And is that, is, that it, is that something that it automatically kicks in? Like you have to like automatically ship to their network when you get close? Like how do you how do you like get people to understand that and make that make that leap? Um, but that's that was the initial. That's where we began with this. So you know, pretty pretty quickly, you you've landed on the issue. And and guess what? Guess what? It doesn't matter how great your app is. It doesn't matter how intuitive it is. If we can't get people onto a network, it doesn't matter. This isn't something that can work offline. It it ha you are literally scanning groceries with your phone. It knows what you pick up and then when you leave. Like it if the system isn't in place, none of that matters. So, um anyway. 
Security system. What are the safeguards against theft? Yes, that's the system. Inventory system. How is the inflow and outflow being tracked? Are bags part of the inventory or customers required to bring their own? That's a really great question. Is anybody monitoring that? And if they're not monitoring that, um, how do you keep somebody from just picking up a bunch of bags and walking out? I don't know. Uh, staffing system. Is staff available to help with customer questions, concerns? How does the staff understand does the staff understand how to resolve technical issues with the app? And, and here is the, it, it's funny because this cashless store, you would think that there would be no cashiers, right? So it, if there's staff there, why couldn't they be a cashier? Like I thought the whole point of the cashless store was to get rid of the staffing necessary. Um, it, in, in many ways, it, it probably does. It just leaves you with people who are who are stalkers. They are basically, I'm stalking the store and I'll answer your question. Um, but there is a question of, there. you know, the staff here has to be trained to talk, to talk people through like, oh, hey, yes, you've got to be on the Wi-Fi. You've got to. You've got to be able to, um, you've got to be able to, um, yeah, what type of phone do you have? Oh, yeah, it's over here. Like, they have to be well-versed in all that, which means there's a training requirement here, particularly for that store. Um, electrical system, how is the store being powered? Is it solar or through an electric grid? Yeah, if the power goes out in the store, at, and, and this is an issue when, um, oh, God, uh, CPG, California Power, CPL, uh, Power and Light, um, there was a there were the brownouts last last year, where um, or no over the last couple of years where they had to shut off power to portions of uh, California because of wildfires that they, they keep getting sparked by the power lines. Um, so they instead of fixing that, they just shut off power. Well, these stores require power, so they basically can't operate. Like these stores basically just lock the doors on them because you can't do anything. There's no way to. There's no way for them to function. Um, shopping cart system inflow outflow. Uh, it's kind of similar to what was there earlier. Store system. Is it the same in both locations? Because the in the in the in the prompt it set, says there are two locations, or is each franchise or is each a franchise with a different way of doing things? Um, if you live in a bigger city, um, particularly. Uh, Mid, uh, well, depends on the, the, the town. You'll sometimes see like Chicken Shack number 22, uh, Euro, Euro Hut 13. Um, each of those are typically a, it, it's a franchise and they, they may have a, they may have some of the similar food on the menu, but it also may change. We have, um, we have a chain here in Chicago where, depending they actually have to rank like which which version of this chicken place should you go to because each one is radically different some are really good and some are terrible it's not like walking into a mcdonald's where you kind of are at a mcdonald's and it's the same experience regardless where you go the difference between these places is great so so picking up on that idea that yeah these could be actually just the same name of a store but really different um what are the requirements to shop at the store um the customer requirements you need a phone the working camera good internet connection cashless mobile app register account with software credit card debit card personal shopping bags shopping list uh, cart to carry the items um, advantages quick easy to shop yeah saves time uh, nice for customers who don't carry cash. I'm one of those. Um, I often feel bad sometimes when I, you know, my kid will say, can I borrow a couple bucks for something going on at school? I'm like, yeah, I, I, I got to go to the bank because I don't have a dollar. Um, I'm terrible, right? I'm a terrible person. Um, backlog receipts. Uh, for customers to check and keep track of their spending habits. Uh, store might have less staff on hand, which could save business money. That's that's the that's the linchpin right there. That's why that's why you see it happening. Like, why do we need these people? Uh, con 
consumer business safety theoretically eliminated would eliminate credit card skimming situations due to the axing of physical cash. Also, robbers would struggle if there's no physical cash to take. Yeah, there's no physical physical cash to take. Um, I could totally see this place getting knocked over for like food. Um, but there's nobody there's nobody around to stop me. Uh, what are the disadvantages? Um, so how much how much does this type of technology system cost to keep up? I'm going to tell you relatively little. Um, the disadvantage would fall if the business uh, fall on could fall on the business if they choose to absorb the cost, or it fall on the consumer. Yeah, the, the technological cost isn't the, isn't an issue. Is it hackable? That's a great question. Sticky fingers. There needs to be some sort of system to make sure all the items in a, someone's cart are scanned. Otherwise, the business can lose a lot of money from stolen merchandise. Um, uh, dependency on technology. What happens when computer systems go down? How does a store close down for the? Does the store close down for the day, or is there a backup um, backup system? This that seems like an expensive problem. That is correct. Um, does this impact the customer perception of the store? Could it impact the branding? Bad media coverage. Um, and then this last one. This is the linchpin. What about people who don't have a bank account or credit card? Does the store not service those customers? And um, I'm not seeing the sketch. Um, so it. Oh, there it is. Sorry. It's here. Uh, let's take a look at the sketch just to see what you got. Yeah, so cash the store, person comes in. So see scan complete. I'm guessing that this, like, I see, I see the person going in the store, grabbing some food, getting the confirmation that the scan is complete, and then leaving the store. Um, what's important here is you understand the f you understand the flow okay um yeah it you know a lot of people were like i can't draw and it's like yeah fine that i get it that, that you know stick figures are fine okay this is you <laughs> talking we're not we're not talking art class we're talking about design systems um yeah the stick figures are fine but you understand flow and flow is crucially important when you're thinking about how an application works. You're thinking about how a system functions. Okay, It's not just a screen. It's how are people using this thing in a physical space? So yeah, you, 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 you hit all the marks there. But, but the thing that I, I, I lock in on is the two big problems, and this this um, this last one right here, this is what's getting lawsuits filed. Um, State of Wisconsin filed a lawsuit against cashless stores um, because they basically chop out, they carve out a group of people and say, "Yeah, you can't come here." And it's not just it's not just people without money like there are people with money but for whatever reason they don't have a bank account okay and you know there uh, john oliver last night talked about uh on his show last week tonight he was talking about uh postal offices and and one of the things that the postal service could do to get itself back on proper footing is to reenact postal banking which would be great for a lot of rural communities in America because they lack a bank. Like there literally is no bank there. And I can tell you that where this would really become an issue is if your Dollar General. Dollar General is a um, small, uh, it's like a dollar store. Dollar, literally Dollar General. It's a Dollar General store. They have general products, like Cokes and um, cake mixes and 
soup cans. You get the idea. Um, if they if they went cashless, they said, you know what? In Flint, Michigan, we we had our, one of our security guards shot because of some crazy person. They didn't want to wear a mask in the store. You know what? We're gonna we're gonna make those stores cashless because they're safer for people because there's nobody that can get shot over the wearing or not wearing of a mask. Walk with me here. It's a bit of a hypothetical. But if all the Dollar Generals in America went cashless, because that would be a huge saver, it would drive up their margins significantly, that would mean people in rural communities where the largest portion of the unbanked population lives would suddenly be carved out in a way. It could actually be a, a real negative for Dollar General. Um, so you would have to have some way for these unbanked people to shop. I guarantee you there's a lot of people that walk into a Dollar General with a $5 bill and they walk out with like, you know, $5 worth of food. They don't walk in there with a credit card because they don't have one. So, you know, this exercise, while it may seem to stretch out in a few different directions, you hit the two things that I was looking for here. One, you identified a big disadvantage would be for people who lack, who are unbanked. And then B, you picked up on the fact that if this place has any sort of internet connectivity issue, whether it is a cell phone coverage in that area or if it is the Wi-Fi itself, the store's not going to work. Okay? And this, these two things are radically different from one another but show you two break points in the system that you should be aware of as a designer. And that means that when you're in conversations with your team talking through, okay, how is this going to, how, how is this going to break on us? This is the, these are the things that you bring up. That does not mean that your team doesn't move forward. That means your team moves forward with awareness of the problem that means that your team moves forward thinking about okay so what can we do to mitigate these issues how can how how can we help solve for these problems because these are problems inherent to the systems in which our work will exist in it's it's vitally important that you identify these up front these are the things that these are the things that you need to be thinking about. And when we get into this in observational research, like we start talking about this very early on, okay? So what are the things that are going on in this physical space that I'm watching and observing people go through through an interaction? What, like, what are the things that I'm seeing? Now, we've shifted that observational research a bit because of social distancing. We've shifted. Now, we're still... We're still going into a physical space, okay? Uh, we're maintaining our, our proper distance. We're wearing a mask. But what we're, at, we're really looking for is how are people interacting with one another? What's the social norms in the place where I'm at? Because they're going to be different from Kara up in New York City to Eve in South Carolina to James over in Seattle to Chelsea down in Austin those those norms are going to be all different and a company is going to ha like I see the real challenge here being a national slash international company a local company is going to be very tuned into what's going on where they're at but it's going to be very difficult for a national organization to institute here's how we operate across the company because every local dynamic is going to be slightly different. And this is a this is a strange thing for a place like the United States or the UK or any country that has a number of population centers because each one of them is going to operate like its own country now. Um, it's going to be a very strange time. And it's not just the West. Um... I don't know if anybody's noticed the numbers on Russia, but Russia is about to become the second hot spot, right? It, U.S. U.S. Russia, one two, just like always. Just here, it's the worst possible race you could have. 
All right, good work, Chelsea. I'm going to leave some notes on that. Um, but that wraps it up for the feedback loop uh, for Monday. Welcome back, everybody. Glad to see Chelsea in. Glad to see Rebecca in. I've got a call coming up, and I've got to shoot some videos this morning. So I will chat with all of you again tomorrow. Take care.